Good afternoon. My name is Mark Barber, and I'm a candidate for Adams County School Board District Number Two. Um, before I start, though, I would like to thank the Historical Society for this yeah. this forum this evening. I wish more people would come out because this is how it should be right here. You know, it shouldn't be about who's got the most number of signs down Highway 41 or Shiloh Road or anything like that. It should be meeting the candidate and know what knowing what that candidate's about and what their beliefs are. So I do thank you for this forum. This is fantastic. I want to start this evening by just giving you just briefly giving you a little background about myself. Uh, my family moved to Lowndes County in 1972. I will have to admit, uh, I did start in the other school system for two years. Uh, I think my parents must, sorry Scott, my, <laughs> my parents must have took leave of their senses or whatever. They're in the audience, not you can talk to them about that. <laughs> but I started my Lowndes County school career in seventh grade at A. Howard Junior High School. Way back in the day when you crossed Highway 122 to change classes and all those good things for those who remember those days. Um, I then uh, moved on and I graduated, was an undergraduate from Lowndes High School in 1981. I decided to stay here in town and attend Valdosta State College as it was back then, back in the old days. I received my, finally after five years, I received my accounting and finance degree from Valdosta State College. I then moved on after graduation and had the fantastic opportunity. I was hired by a Fortune 500 company to work in their corporate headquarters as a young college grad. You know, that was, that was fantastic and I was so excited. Uh, about three or four years into the job though, you know, living out of a suitcase kind of gets, uh, kind of gets lonely and you come home on Friday night and you go again Monday morning and by this time I was married, had a child and I began to miss my son's first steps and first walks and things like that. And, you know, I wanted to coach his baseball team and basketball team. So I realized I needed to probably move on to another career. So we were visiting my parents and on 1989, I saw a job ad for the city of Alasta as a staff accountant. Never thought about doing anything like that before. Never entered my mind. I went for the interview and um, the best thing that happened to me, I got the job. And uh, yeah, as you can imagine, it's a little culture shock there coming from a Fortune 500 company to a public entity. Things run a little bit different. Salaries are a lot different, let me tell you. So it took a little bit of adjusting for me, but I began to love it. Because even though I was not an elected official, I felt I was giving back to the community that had given so much to me over the years. And, uh, but I realized I wanted to do more. So in 1996, I was hired by um, the city of Thomasville to be their director of financial services. Um, in hopes of one day coming back to my community and doing something bigger and better. And um, the good thing with Thomasville is I commuted for four years because we felt it, was, by this time we had a daughter, she was at Hay Higher Elementary, and we just felt it was important that they stayed in the Lowndes County School. So the city of Thomasville allowed me to commute, which we felt was very important. I'm very, still very grateful to them for that. When uh, with the city of Thomasville, I stayed four years, and like I said, I needed to do something to, cl to climb the ladder, if you will. Uh, I had no idea that the city of Alasta was going to er offer an early out program for some of the folks throughout the city, and so their finance director at that time took that offer, so I was truly blessed, and I got to come back home to Valdosta, and I was named the director of finance in 2000, and then in 2007, I was named the deputy city manager for administration, which is the um, position I currently hold. It's not a glamorous career by any means, but it is one that I'm, I'm very proud of, and I think it's one that has set me up to do more things in our community. As I said, I'm married. I'm married to the former Judy Cothran. She's here in the, in the audience. Uh, we have two kids. My son Landon's here. He graduated from Lyons in 2007, and my daughter Victoria just graduated last year in 2013 and attends Young Harris College. You know, when I announced my candidacy for for the school board, kind of like you, Mr. Bennett, folks, more, why in the world do you want to do this? And uh, it's just simple. But when you respond to people, it, it sounds simple. Yeah, the basic bottom line is that it's our kids, it's our future. That's been the theme of my campaign this year. I know it sounds simple, but that's what it's about, folks, <coughs> is educating our kids and making sure they have what they need to face the future. You know, but one of the things that, that really excite me about public education is this is that it's an equalizer. And what I mean by that is this, that no matter your socioeconomic economic background, your gender, your race, no matter what it is, there's, 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 the options are there for everybody. Now granted, not every child's gonna take that option, I understand that. But I believe it's incumbent upon the school system 
and the school board to make sure those options are there and they're the best options available. So when our kids leave the Lowndes County school system, no matter what they choose to do, college, tech school, career military, they're shining beacons of wherever they go. They go out, they're successful, and they come back and they're able to make our community more vibrant, <clears throat> excuse me, and healthy. So that's why I'm running for school board. That's what I'm passionate about. You know, uh, we met, uh, Superintendent Taylor was gracious enough to meet with the school board candidates uh, a few weeks back and gave us some materials about the budget and things of that nature. And two things he told us, the, the, the two decisions that, that school board members are going to face the most are budgetary and financial issues and policy issues. And so I want to talk about the financial piece of it right now because, you know, the warm and fuzzy is what I just talked about. We want all our kids to be successful. But there's the other side of it, the number side, the finance side of it. We've got to be able to provide the funding if we're going to create a quality education for our kids. As I said, I feel, and when I stand here and say this, I don't want to appear arrogant at all, but I've served 25 years in the public finance arena. I truly believe that's a position that I can hit the ground running in the finance area. I know the difference in a public dollar and a private dollar because I've worked in both worlds. This public dollar, you better shake it, turn it, twist it, stretch it, whatever you got to do to get every penny and maximize every dollar because that's what the taxpayer gave it to us for, to provide a quality education for our kids. I believe that's where I can hit the ground running and be very, <clears throat> excuse me, be very hopeful. You know, especially because in District 2, our, our incumbent's not running. Now, I'm not standing up here telling you that I'm going to fill Fred Worthington's shoes. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I think that I've got the experience to step in there and take charge. Now, that leaves me time then to learn the other the other internet idiosyncrasies of a school system. So again, that's where I feel I'm very strong is in the financial side. The policy side, you know, policies are necessary, absolutely necessary. But here's what I found with my 25 years of, of implementing and developing public policy is this, is that that inefficiency you're trying to do away with with a policy, sometimes you make it worse or you've created another inefficiency. And you got it. And if you see that happening, then you got to step back and you got to start again. You got to have the courage to say, "Hey, guys, we've made a mistake. We need to step back and, and start this process again." The type of policies that I will support as a board member, if I'm fortunate enough to be elected, are policies that empower the teachers to get in the classrooms and teach again, and not have to worry so have so much pressure on them about a standardized test. I support policies where teachers know their value, appreciated, and needed. Because my, my sister's been a teacher for 23 years now. I have a lot of friends that are educators. And I don't, I, I don't think this word's going to be too severe, but teachers are feeling downtrodden these days, folks. They're not, they're not our kids' babysitters. But so many folks, I think, are sending their kids to school today for babysitting purposes. Our kids aren't just, I mean, our teachers are not disciplinarians. That's not what they're there for. That's a conversation mom and daddy need to have with the kids before they ever get to school. But these are the kind of things our teachers are getting burdened with these days, and they can't, they're finding where they cannot really teach. They're trained professionals. They know how to motivate our kids to get the most out of them. So let's get the policies that support that type of education again. I mean, I'm almost as simply said, it's almost really right them in arithmetic again because there's so many uh, policies out there that, that are burdening teachers. So I feel strongly about that. I really need, we need to free up teachers to do what they've been trained to do. They're fantastic because, and you look on the news nightly, you see qualified teachers that are leaving public education simply because of this. And I'm just here to tell you, if you're not recruiting and maintaining the best and brightest Teachers, we're not going to put out the best and brightest students. That's just that's just how simple that is. So that's what I'm passionate about. Are those type of policies? Let's get let's empower our teachers once again. How it used to be. Uh, you know, I think I went over my time. I'm sorry. I didn't think I taught this long. Let me just say in conclusion. Let me say this. Again, my theme for my campaign this year has been our kids, our future. Simplistic, archaic, maybe cliqueish, clicheish, maybe. Uh, but it's the, that's just the bottom line, because the kids in school now, 
they're going to get out of they're going to get out of school and they're going to make decisions that affect our future as well so selfishly i want them to have the best education possible out there because they are going to make some decisions that are going to affect us in our lifetime and we've got to make sure they're educated the only promise i'll make you if you will elect me school board member is this is i would not be out here trying to accept such a responsibility if i did not truly truly believe that i can play a pivotal role in the Lowndes county board of education and the continuing the excellent education that's already there and taking it a step further and working with teachers administrators my fellow board members, to make it even a better school system. I thank you for your time.